Are you looking to play combo in modern and interested in a one card combo deck that's reliable, efficient, and highly competitive? Then have I got a deck for you. Bring to Light Scape Shift is modern's premier one card combo deck. A deck that kills your opponents with lands entering the battlefield? Wait, what? That's right. Bring to Light Scape Shift is a combo control deck that looks to kill opponents by sacrificing a handful of lands to search out a number of mountains and valicuts via the linchpin card scape shift. Your ideal turn sequencing will start with a turn one suspended search for tomorrow, followed by a turn two Sakura tribe elder, which ensures that you have five mana in any color combination your hand could demand on turn three. This means that you are only two more lands from going off and killing your opponent. Theoretically, if you are able to play a land from hand and hard cast to search for tomorrow, your opponent could be dead on turn four. Hooray for one card combos. Obviously, this is not always going to be the case, as chances are you'll be slowed down needing to use counter magic and removal to fizzle your opponent's own plans. This is actually what makes Scape Shift great. It is a combo control deck that has tools to buy itself time before going off. Let's look at what makes up the deck. We'll begin with creatures. The deck runs four Sakura Tribe Elder. Elder's primary role is to get you to four mana on turn three, and also is really great at chump blocking before you activate to find your basic. It is important to have four mana turn three to enable casting Cryptic Command. One Snapcaster Mage, because in case you had not noticed from every format in which it is legal, Snapcaster Mage is a very, very, very good card. Rebuying any of your spells is very powerful and usually will tempo out an opponent so your deck can go off. Occasionally in this deck, Snapcaster acts as a ramp spell and a chump blocker, but usually is used to snap back a lightning bolt or a remand. Moving on to spells, the deck main boards for lightning bolt. This is, as always, clean, efficient, and gets them dead. Although it is valid to say in our current meta, bolt is at an all-time low of effectiveness. I can easily see one being cut for a third Worldly Council. We also include one Is It Charm, which is a great flexible spell and perfect for this deck. Remove a pesky attacker, loot to find your combo, or counters to protect the combo. Two Worldly Council, with the days of Dig Through Time sadly behind us. We play this as a way to find our combo. It is also worth noting that out of the sideboard, Scapeshift will commonly add creatures such as Inferno. Inferno Titan, Obstinate Bayloth, and Thrag Tusk. And because of this, I recommend playing Worldly Council over Peer Through Depths in the Bring to Light version. Also, sometimes what you really want to find is a land, and Council helps us by being less selective than Peer Through Time. The deck also runs a playset of Remand. While this is nowhere on the power level of Time Walk, the ability to essentially control Z or undo your opponent's spell on an early turn and then draw a card for one in blue feels pretty close. This card is essential for your early game play plan and we run a full playset. Repeal is an effective catch-all that will draw you a card. This mostly serves as an out to opposing main board blood moons. One Electrolyze kills random small creatures and draws a card. What's not to love? This is occasionally a three for one where you kill two creatures with one toughness and also draw a card. That right there is value. A full playset of Search for Tomorrow as this is our ideal turn one play. When we do suspend this turn one, this card is getting us four mana on turn three. We also main board a Wrath of God because having one out to an aggressive board state is nice, especially since we can tutor it up with Bring to Light when needed. Three Cryptic Command, here we have one of Modern's best blue cards. Every mode on this card is super relevant and can buy you at least a turn while you assemble your combo. The typical choices are to counter target spell and draw a card because who doesn't love drawing cards? Bouncing a permanent can also be relevant mode to end the game. For example, our deck simply cannot win through a Blood Moon or a Ley Line of Sanctity. This answers those. 
two engineered explosives. The more I play this card, the more I am impressed by it. Except, you know, when I'm playing Bogles or Merfolk and the damn thing is used against me. In which case, I hate it. Engineered explosives usually can serve as a two for one. And with this version of Bring to Light Scape Shift, it can get up to five counters. Although it is rare that you would need to go that high. Obviously, we're running three Scape Shift. Once you have your seventh land in play, you can go off and cast Scape Shift. Sacrificing your lands to find six mountains and one Valakut, dealing 18 points of damage, which usually kills your opponent. It's also in your best interest most times to float whatever mana you can before sacrificing your lands, so that you can hold up some counter magic to protect your combo. Valakut Math. When scape shifting, each mountain represents three damage for each Valakut you have on the board. Meaning if your opponent is, for example, at 29 life, just wait an extra turn and go off with eight lands. In this example, eight lands equals six mountains plus two Valakut. No, they aren't legendary. Thank you very much, Wizards of the Coast. I guess on Zendikar, there's more than one giant fiery mountain named Valakut. Three damage times six mountains times two Valakut equals 36 points of damage and and one very dead opponent. The deck also runs a full playset of Bring to Light in that this is called Bring to Light Scape Shift. In the deck, Bring to Light essentially is Scape Shifts four through seven. Bring to Light lets us run more copies of our combo piece without worrying about drawing multiples. Having multiple Scape Shifts in your hand is terrible, and you can't really do much with them other than hope for the best in terms of your combo going off. Multiple copies of Bring to Light, on the other hand, can be very versatile, as you can use it for that scape shift, but if you have an actual scape shift, bring to light can cast and tutor for what you need, and still just win you the game. What's the mana base look like? The deck runs two breeding pools, one blood crypt, two forest, one hollowed fountain, three islands. A threat of the opponent's blood moon is the main reason that you should prioritize finding your basic islands first. That way you can cast cryptic command through a blood moon. We also run one misty rainforest, one mountain, one plane, Lanes, a full play set of steam vents and stomping ground, one wooded foothills, two scalding tarn, and of course two valicuts, the molten pinnacle. Again, not a legendary. What's in our sideboard? While versatile as always, I recommend two ancient grudge, great against affinity and lantern control, two timely reinforcements, great against burn, abzan, and jund. You might even consider these against affinity. Two kitchen finks, really just an annoying creature for any fair deck to have to deal with, good against Jund, Abzan, Nahiri Control, and Burn. Two Anger of the Gods, a great sweeper for when you want things to stay dead. Exiled, in fact. Good against Affinity, Hate Bears, Malira Combo, and Kiki Cord. One Bribery, oh, I love Bribery. I don't see this recommended by a lot of people, but I must say it's the most fun. I love the idea of taking my opponent's Emrakul or biggest threat in general. Also worth noting, with the main board Blood Crypt, it can be brought to light with Bring to Light, one Sigarda, Host of Herons. Jund, Abzan, and most control decks have a very difficult time answering this threat. A 5-5 flying hexproof beat stick will kill your opponent very, very extremely fast. One Crumble to Dust to get rid of those pesky lands that do anything other than add one mana to the mana pool. Examples being just about any man land, such as an Ink Moth, any Tron piece, and of course, Gavany Township. One Crosan Grip, because we simply cannot win through a Blood Moon. Two Obstinate Baloth, great against opposing Liliana of the Veil, which is normally a card we struggle against game one, and it serves the obvious purpose against Burn. And finally, one Negate, mostly here to protect the combo while going off against opposing counter magic. Bring to Light Scape Shift is a competitive tier one deck for modern. Its unique flavor of combo control consistently gets results, all the while providing a fun and complex gameplay experience. If you're interested in buying the cards shown here or any other singles for that matter, be sure to check out this channel's sponsor, Card Kingdom, via our affiliate link in the description. All prices in this video shown are Card Kingdom prices. And this video has been brought to you in part by a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers like you. So thank you.